Hello, everybody. This is DJ Dr. Chris. And it's your favorite nurse practitioner, Bree. And today in the rehab corner, I'm going to be talking about inflammation. And for your daily dose of Brie, we're going to be talking about allergies and how inflammation ties into it. And then we'll pop open the bottle and see what comes out. I'm excited. This is popping bottles. Cool. All right, Brie, so am I going first today? I think I am, right? Yep. Okay. So we're talking about inflammation today. So inflammation to me has just got like a bad reputation. It's a bad word, right? Everyone's afraid of inflammation. Do you think it's bad or good? What do you say? I'm in between. In between is probably the right answer. I see it this way. Inflammation is the natural part of the healing process. It's step two in healing. So when you have a wound, if you cut yourself, first thing that happens is blood clots the area. And then the next thing that happens is white blood cells or inflammation to crowd the space to eat off dead skin cells, kill off pathogens, right? So it's, it's a good thing in the short, right? But we always want to try to block it. Now, that's where I have a problem. So the way I see it is you have different types of inflammation. You got sort of the acute inflammatory response, which is the good stuff, but then it can go into chronic. So sometimes the cell mediators that control inflammation, that whole system kind of goes haywire and gets tripped. And then you're left with chronic inflammation. So that's, that's one way I differentiate acute versus chronic. Acute good, chronic bad, right? Uh, yeah. Why is chronic bad? Well, that can lead to more tissue death. Uh, you just have increased pressure in the area, which can literally squash cells. Um, and it can lead to things like synovitis. And actually, the scary one is it can actually erode cartilage. So a lot of studies are coming out now about knee arthritis and looking at diets and a, a heavy sugar diet leading to sort of chronic inflammation may be a key culprit in knee OA. So, and then the other thing I look at too is um, local versus systemic, right? So obviously systemic meaning it can, you know, hits your whole body. That type of inflammation is, is a no-no and something we want to try to control. And that I see really through diets, lack of exercise. Those are the types of things that will lead to sort of chronic systemic inflammation. And you know, the way that you said um, with diet, diet does, I believe, which research is starting to come out, your gut has a lot to do with your overall health. And if you're allergic or have a sensitivity to certain foods or allergens, it causes the inflammation to happen throughout your entire body. So your diet really does have a lot to do with your, like your, the inflammation that you have, like the sensitivities that you have. You may have muscle aches, pains. Oh my gosh. This is what happens when you have children. Excuse the dogs. They'll be quiet in a second. Either way, when you have aches and pains, sometimes it's because of something you ate instead of a certain injury to the area. And also, if you injure an area, it may take longer or it might be prolonged healing time because of your diet. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that kind of taps into sort of that, that biopsychosocial model, which a lot of uh, physical therapists are really looking at is, you know, is an injury and the pain you're having truly the only source? Uh, or I should say only variable, you know, you have to look at everything. You have to look at your sleep. You have to look at uh, your diet. Uh, those things are like amplifiers for pain. So yeah. if you start to track, if you have an injury and, you know, you can kind of keep like a daily journal, track your pain number, and then also look at how many hours did I sleep last night? What was the quality of the sleep? What was my diet like? If you start to track those things out, you'll, you'll, you'll usually see sort of a, um, some sort of correlation between Okay, I didn't sleep that well last night. Had a you know birthday cake the night before, and suddenly my pain's through the roof. Okay, well maybe those things add up to something. Oh, I totally agree. I took a food sensitivity test um, a couple months ago, and which you know it varies, but I am sensitive to beer, tequila, champagne, red wine, white wine, and rosé. 
It's like all the stuff. Um, <laughs> but my vodka right? is the only thing left. <laughs> <laughs> so if I and I have noticed, I was like, why do I always feel so sluggish and tired the next day after drinking? I cut it out for 30 days and I only drank vodka. I did not have the same feeling. Oh, that's interesting. So I really feel like there's something, I feel like more research should be done with the gut and gut health, but I really think there is something to help correlate all of this. Yeah, the gut seems to be like the barometer for your, your health, right? I think it's just as important as the brain. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but what about fermentation, right? So fermentation is supposedly pretty good for your guts. I, I've been reading a lot of conflicting stuff. You know, I, I know like my brother drinks kombucha tea all the time. I, you know, I think there's maybe the right balance of fermentation, but it seems like you can go too much into it and have some complications. I mean, that's what I, was wondering. Well, I feel like that's with anything. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. So, well, I don't know, but that's something we could dive into a little later. Yeah, we'll look into that one. Well, speaking of systemic inflammation, are we ready to open some wine? No, we are going to talk about allergies next and Bree's Corner. Right. Let's see <laughs> so with your daily dose of Bree, we're going to talk about just allergies. A lot of people don't really understand what allergies are. Um, I know my fiance, for example, if I start sniffling or coughing, he's like, oh, you must have caught a cold. No, I'm not sick. I have allergies. I'm allergic to, which I know of as pollen is the main one. The different types of pollen is another breakdown. We can go a whole nother hour, two hours. I'm not going into that. But so the true definition of an allergy is it occurs when your immune system reacts to a foreign substance. That could be pollen. That could be venom. That could be pet dander food. Just something that your body is reacting to. Now, your immune system produces antibodies once you have this reaction, and it tells your body that there's a particular allergen that may be harmful. And that is why you have the different symptoms like skin inflammation, sinus inflammation, or digestive inflammation. Your body's trying to protect itself from the foreign substance. So that goes along with the inflammation systemically. You could be allergic to something and not know it. It's not a high severe allergy where you're anaphylactic and you could possibly die, but it's low enough that it's causing something to happen throughout your entire body. That's interesting. There's a company. And it's funny that we took an allergy test. Did you get your results on the allergy part? I do. But see, this is what gets me. So this company. We did a finger prick and um, we, it was sent to a lab and the company's called Canyon, Canyon MD. And for the most part, I feel like it said all my allergies were correct. So I'm going to read you off some of mine and then I can read you off some of yours if you want to. Mm. Yeah, I'm dying to know. So it says I'm allergic to tree pollen. Um, tree pollens, which like I said, I know I'm allergic to pollen. It wasn't really high, high, but it was pretty moderate. So some of the trees I'm allergic to are cottonwood, birch white, and then it says Australian pine, which is probably nowhere near here. And then there's another one called maple pollen, pecan pollen, queen palm, just different trees, grass allergies. It's so funny because if I sit in grass, I break out in hives. So, like, I knew some of these were going to come back positive. Mm -hmm. um, what did shock me was this. If I get bit by a mosquito, I legit break out in hives. Like, the mosquito bite isn't this little cute little cream point. It's, like, swollen all over my body. Um, and it doesn't show a mosquito allergy for me on here. It does say fire ant, which the same thing happens with fire ants, honeybees and wasps. I'm allergic to those. So, so that's good to know. And um, I have a milk allergy, which I already knew because I'm lactose intolerant. So um, I'm supposed to stay away from milk, but I eat cheese like on a daily. So that it's just, I'm just pretty much killing my stomach 
which is worth it sometimes for pizza. But those are my main ones. Most of them I already knew, but it was nice to see some other ones that I didn't know that popped up, you know? And this is all through that uh, finger prick COVID tests, right? Yes, the COVID test from Canyon MD. So all that is through them. Um, you mentioned Australian pines. I do think there are Australian pines here in South Florida. I know like Pembroke really? pine. Yeah, well, I can't remember if it's Japanese or Australian pines because they're invasive to Florida. Uh, and I believe like Pembroke pines, Florida, that's over the East Coast, they have, there's a whole area just loaded with all these like dying pines. And I think they're Australian. Maybe wrong. They may be Japanese. Oh, well, that would be interesting because like I told you, I've only lived in Florida for September will be two years, so I'm not used to all the trees down here. It could be. It'll be interesting to see. I'll do some research on it. Do you want some of yours? Yes. So for those of you listening, I took my uh, COVID test uh, last Monday, and I'm negative. Correct? That's all I know so far. But through the antibody testing, we're going to find all these allergies. So uh, let me start off by saying I did an allergy test when I was in high school the one where they do like lots of little injections on your arm. And it turned out back then I was allergic to grass and turpentine of all things. So that, that's the only allergies. Oh, I have. really? Yeah. Well, was, we're both allergic to grass. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, the interesting thing is, so I had uh, like sort of chronic bronchitis. Well, I think it was my sophomore year in high school and I was trying to play hockey and I was coming off the ice coughing all the time. So my parents took me for this allergy test. I was having migraines too. Uh, and it turns out turpentine was the big one because we had just moved into this new house, like newly constructed house. Apparently there was turpentine in the wood. So we moved out of the house and it cured my bronchitis. Wow. See, a lot. I, I feel like it has, I mean, allergies can make you sick. So mm -hmm. Definitely oh, overlooked. Okay. So lay out. Okay. What, so what for got? you... You have a low allergy sensitivity to cottonwood, birch white, and what did you say, acronym? No, turpentine. Turpentine. Well, you have acronym. Um, I have a what? Um, pecan pollen, red birch, hickory, Virginia live oak, and you have a lot of allergies to grass, like Bermuda grass. Um, June grass, there's one I can't even pronounce, which that'll be all right. Um, you're allergic to cockroaches, dog hair. Really allergic to cockroaches? Mouse hair. Wait, did you say dog hair? Yeah. Does it differentiate it differentiate between short or long? Is, it, is that even a thing? It just said dog. Hmm. Yeah, I'm surprised mine didn't say dog as well, but it said dog. You're allergic to garlic. What? Well, mm -hmm. I'll just deal with that. It's one. a very low allergy, but it still showed up. Wow. I didn't even know that was um, a thing. You're allergic to barley, corn, buckwheat, soybean, wheat grains. So you probably have a gluten allergy, but you can have oats. Hmm. You're allergic to almonds. I'm also allergic to almonds. That showed up on mine. Which I already knew that because I there this this developed later on in life for me. I was at work and I've been to an almond, my throat started closing up. And I was like, no more almonds for me. But yeah, you're allergic to almonds, peanuts, mustard seed, walnuts. Oh my god. Mustard and you have the seed? high allergy to milk. To milk? Yep. Whoa. This is this is like kind of mind blowing for me. Um, you're allergic to mosquitoes, honeybee. Fire ants. Jeez. I feel like I developed that one. Remember that period where I was just getting stung like crazy in my yard? And I told you to stop before you die? Yes. <laughs> back when my, I was like, you're back when my die. yard was trying yep. to kill me. <laughs> that's it. Wow, that's kind of a lot. I, I had no idea. I mean, I eat a ton of cheese. I love cheese. I know. That's what I said. I you love have garlic. a higher allergy to cheese than I did. I hate cockroaches. There's only one thing that makes me scream like a girl. It's cockroaches. Oh, that's, mm. <laughs> so that checks I out. I scream. But I put like <laughs> I suffocate them. I put something on top of them so they can't move, and I collect like, a week later, and they're usually dead. 
How, how do you suffocate a cockroach? You put it underneath like a um, cup or something. <laughs> that seems like a really long process. Why don't you just step on them? Hey, I, I can't do that. I don't want to, I can't do it. That just creeps me out. So anyway. You just take a flip flop <laughs> and it's done. Because mm -mm, I'll throw the flip flop because I don't want to hear the crunching sound. I just don't do it. Yeah, there is something nasty so. about that crunch, right? I have a theory. Actually, this is my brother's theory about cockroaches, why they're so gross. It's about the speed. Right? Should we, wait, wait, wait. Should we discuss that after we open up a bottle? Oh, okay. Let's do it now. Let's open that bottle. I'm ready to drink. All right. What are you drinking? Well, I am popping a bottle of, it's called Pure Lenore. I think I said that right. And if I mispronounced it, I'm sorry for whoever the maker is. Um, it's a family, I think it's called the Bruger, the Bruguerie family. They're in France. Um, it's the Lenore Valley. It's a family owned um, winery. Apparently it's been like six generations. They started up in like 1885 or 89, something like that. But I love that because I got this one from Total Wine. It wasn't that expensive. It was either between $9.99 or $19.99. Um, it tastes so crisp clean it's a rosé they have other wines but i was in the mood for rosé tonight but i absolutely love this one it's not too sweet it's not too dry it's like right in the middle yeah i thought that was a white it's a rosé it's a rosé yeah it looks kind of white from here it's yeah just i love rosés yeah rosés are often overlooked a rosé champagne is pretty tasty as well mm-hmm Anyways, I am drinking red as usual, and I also don't really know how to pronounce this one. La Vieille Femme, I guess. I'm guessing. Let me see it. And it is a Syrah. I love Ooh, Syrahs. I love Syrahs. Yeah. Not so, Syrahs. okay. I know Syrahs. this is silly. Right. How do you, do you pronounce it Syrah? I called it Syrahs. Okay, so it just depends on where it's from. So that's French, so French, it's, it's a grape. It's the same grape, Shiraz and Syrah, the same grape. In France, they say Syrah. In Australia, they say Shiraz, Shiraz. So it's not, oh, and well, people kind of, they kind of bastardize it and they call it Shiraz or Syraz. I don't say it's Syraz, <laughs> I'm not that country. So you gotta pick one. So it's either a Syrah or a Shiraz. I say Shiraz. There you go. I want a straws, but see, is that's how? Because it's spelled different too. Because yeah. I've seen some that are spelled S H. I think there's a Y in there yeah, instead so of an the I. French, the French version is S Y R A H. I think that's what it is. And then Australian is S H I R. Uh, what your bottle says is on the bottle. It it actually, you know, I only know this. It was a gift from my father, and he told me it was a Syrah. I don't think it even says it here. Let me take a quick. Oh look. wow. Yeah, it doesn't say it. Well, so that's a red French, blend. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the French tend to emphasize to where fool the, the people. Uh, right, so that's the, the, like Americans. We classify everything by the grape. It's a Merlot. It's a Cab. Whatever. Uh, whereas the French really, you know, classify things, up, you know, based on where they're from. So oh, really, okay. It's not like a. They don't really advertise. It's a Syrah, you know. Because they do do a lot of blends in general, so it just yeah. you know the region, and you tend to know what grapes are in it based on the region. You know, but anyway, Syrahs, I love yeah. them. They're usually a little peppery. Like it's the only kind of wine that's got a little bit of spice to it. Usually medium bodied. It can hold up to like a nice steak au poivre, which is like one of my favorite things in the world. Mm. So yeah, it's tasty. So I'm loving this one. Perfect. All right, so go back to your theory of cockroaches as I vomit. I have to give my, <laughs> I have to give my brother credit because he really came up with this one. So I mentioned it has to do with the speed, right? It's the yeah. scurry. If, if there's one word, it's scurry. That's what's gross about them, right? Because beetles, they, they kind of look like a cockroach. Sometimes I'll see a cockroach, I'll be like, is that a beetle or a cockroach? It's hard to tell until you see them move, right? A beetle moves real slow, and therefore it's like almost non-threatening. When you see a cockroach scurry underneath your fridge, it's disgusting. I think all bugs are disgusting, but I know we need them for the circle of life. 
Well, cockroaches are fast, right? There's very few insects that are as fast as a cockroach. Not as fast as me. I've caught a couple. Like a centipede is pretty quick, and they're kind of nasty too. So I think it's really yeah. It's the nasty. crawling ones. The flying ones are different, but the crawling insects. It's all about the speed. Well, that's a good theory you and your brother came up with. <laughs> oh, so how do we do on the challenge? Let's see who won. Uh, well, okay, so it hasn't been seven days. It's been more like 10 since our last podcast, right? But we're going to go by the seven. You go by the seven days. So it was Friday to Friday. I did all the business days. <laughs> so I, I think I'm something like six out of 10 days. No, we're only doing seven, Chris. Do not try to cheat. <laughs> well, I did Monday through Friday. We'll call it five. All right, we'll call it five. Five. Okay. We'll call it five. So I did Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday. I did not do it, and Friday I did not do it. So we did a tie. Because Thursday and Friday, I'm not going to lie, I just drank. But <laughs> the other days, I did. It was, uh, so what'd you think of it? I mean, that's not really something I do is I go for walks. I love it. Like, honestly, I think it's, it helps clear your mind. You sweat out a lot of toxins and I think it's a good refresher. Yes. Uh, and Juliana joined me for those listening. Juliana is my wife. Every day she joined me and I was just telling her today, I was like, I think, you know, I think these are really good for a relationship. Yeah, no phone. I think so too. There's no TV. There's no distractions. We're just talking you to each can other. Talk normally. Like yeah. Used to. That's great. And we're also getting to know the neighborhood pretty well too. And I just think it's very intimate in a way because you're just outside with nature, talking, talking about life, just like in general with, like you said, no distractions and. Like Mike is my fiance. Like he he only did he only went with me one time. He was like, I'm not into this. So, but like when we <laughs> did go, <laughs> um, it was pretty good. Like we just like we challenged each other. Like it helps me focus when he's like going faster than I am because I'm a little slow, and then it makes me want to push myself. And then like um, just if I'm not keeping up, he makes me. He motivates me to keep going and not want to quit. So I feel like that's really good. Uh, did you run any of it or was it all walking? Oh, no, I walk run. I have a wedding in October. I have to burn some of this yes. fat. Gotcha. Keep well, forgetting. Your daughter's in it, so please don't forget. So that's a good conversation, too. Maybe we save the podcast for it. But walking, you're going to selectively burn more fat than running. Not necessarily true. I do a walk run. So my heart rate increases and then I oh. slow down for it to decrease. And then okay. I increase it and slow down. So that way it burns the fat before it, it burns fat energy before it tries to burn the muscle energy. Okay. So you're trying to stay. So I won't that. be skinny fat. I want to be toned. <laughs> but you're trying to stay in that aerobic zone. Is that the idea? Yeah, or no, or increase it a little bit. You have to increase it a little bit. Yeah, well, that's but good. then I don't burn myself out mm -hmm. where it's just like constantly running. Because if you stay, if you stay at a constant heart rate, your body gets used to it, mm -hmm. and then it doesn't do what it needs to do. You have to walk longer for a longer period of time in order to burn what I want to burn the fat. So yeah. if I run a little bit in between it helps speed up the process. Kind of like hit training. Yeah, yeah, it's like mini hit training. Yeah, we mm -hmm. just increased our tempo every day. But I mean, part of that's just been, it's so hot right now. I, I just did it not want to run. Nasty. And it is I run so like, nasty right now. Like a Clydesdale, whatever. <laughs> uh, I sweat, it's nasty. And then I jump in the pool afterwards because I'm yeah. just like, I got to cool off. Yeah, we did the same. Yeah, but it's been so. good. So what's the next challenge? Try All right. Up? So the next challenge is going to be. Because I have an idea. Unless you have something. Oh, well, then you can choose it. And then I'll choose it next week. So let's keep the challenge going. And just add another half mile or mile. Well, maybe we should just add a new component to it. Um, okay. Like what? So well, maybe we could maybe I could start a walk running. Well, I guess that's like a challenge you because you've been doing that. But maybe we should add in a different. 
we should keep doing the the walk because I'm enjoying it. Um, and then add in something else so it's like a two tiered challenge. Yeah. You like that? Yeah. You want to do like uh, two hundred sit ups a day or something like that? How many steps a day? Sit ups, not steps. No. Oh. Two hundred sit ups. Something like that. That's a lot of sit ups, but yeah, we can do that. Okay. What type of sit ups? Like standard. Like regular sit up. Are we doing no crunches. What? What's wrong with crunches? Nope, that's not a sit-up, that's a crunch. If you want to do sit-ups, we're doing sit-ups. Okay, like someone okay. holding your ankles and full range sit-up? Yeah, or hopefully you're strong enough that you can just do a sit-up without someone holding your ankle. When was, when was the last <laughs> time you tested yourself on that? I do sit-ups that work out. I have a trainer, so I work out like two to three times a week, and we do at least 60 to 80 sit-ups in the workout. So I was like, fine, let's do this. <laughs> Is he holding your ankles? No, I just do it on my own. My feet don't come off the ground. Like elbows to knees, sit ups. Yes. Sometimes I have a 10 pound weight and I sit up with it. You know, I read an article the military has stopped doing sit ups because it's quote unquote bad for you. You risk yeah. disc herniation. That's probably why my back hurts now. That's not why your back hurts. <laughs> 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 I think, that, you know, there's this whole movement phobia thing in this American culture that I just don't get. I, I disagree with, you know. I, I just, I can't see why a dude in his 20s should be afraid to do a sit-up. That's like and saying, that don't shit, get up I out of bed. I think thinking about the repercussions later on in life. Yeah, but do you think that, like, say you did 500 steps a day, do you think that that's going to increase your risk of disc herniation down the road? If you don't do them correctly. Well, I mean, okay, there's, there's, there's truth to that. Like, you can do anything sloppily. I mean, you could do a bicep curl wrong and injure your calf. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> exactly. Right. So let's just take the form thing out of it and say, okay, everyone knows how to get out of bed and do a sit-up, right? That's what getting out of bed basically is. Do you really think that's gonna, I don't know, risk That's another, that's another bottle. Well, I'm, I'm drinking a Magnum right now, so I got two over here. <laughs> See, I was like, I need to get another bottle if we we're gonna talk about going to another rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll save this conversation. All right, so we'll just go to, let's just say 100 classic style sit-ups Heads, uh, hands by ears, not behind the neck, right? Okay, or yep. prayer style, we can do prayer style? Yep. That's, that's, well, no, it's gonna be more of a crunch. So we'll do uh, hands by ears, full range of motion to the knees, sit up, 100 a day. 100. Yep, a you day. can break it up as you see fit. You can do three sets of 33 and a third, or four 25s. Yes, four 25s. A day okay, along with that. your two mile walk or walk run. Okay. Challenge accepted. Yay. Cool. So I think that's it for this week's podcast. Um, next week we will be going into some different information, talking about some cool things. I really feel like we choose what's happening in the on um, in the world right now to talk about. So we'll see what happens in the next coming days with everything. Yeah, it feels a little bit weird to uh, discuss like a meniscus tear during a COVID crisis. Right. So I'm sure our topics will change as this pandemic eases. So we'll call that a wrap. Until next week, this has been DJ Dr. Chris and your favorite nurse practitioner, Bree. This is Poppin' Bottles. See you Bye. next week.